Hey there, it's Bill with Smart Trades, and it's Tuesday, February the 8th. It's around 12.40 p.m. Pacific time, uh, about 20 minutes before the close, obviously. Uh, let's first take a look here at the S&P 500 cash. This is a daily chart, and as many of you are familiar with, uh, I use the uh, NYSE advances as a surrogate for breath, and they are uh, diverging and not confirming this recent peak. The recent peak, as you may see here, is uh, coming up against a trend line that dates back to July um, of 2010. And um, I think that this that trend line is a likely place that the market is going to uh, uh, feel some resistance and uh, perhaps uh, have a bit of a, cor a correction from. Now, that said, the rally from uh, December and even the rally from uh, September uh, the internals of that rally do not count out well uh, in terms of value. So, uh, you know, as I've stated before, I have, you know, not great confidence in terms of the internal structure of this, uh, this pattern. That said, the combination of breadth divergence here, both on the uh, uh, daily chart and also on the hourly chart, which is uh, yet showing a, a secondary uh, negative divergence, uh, as the market tests that uh, trend line from July, to my way of thinking, is bearish. And uh, as long as breath stays, you know, below that 2,000, the advances stay below 2,000 over the next couple of days, and we don't go blasting through, say, 1330 on the S&P, uh, I favor uh, that we're going to uh, at least have a short-term correction. Um, you know, we'll take it one step at a time, as always. But uh, uh, a short-term target for a correction might be down to 1270. If we take that out, then uh, perhaps we're into something bigger. Uh, here's a, a, another a view of that same chart, and I'm just uh, I've just put the short-term channels on here. These are worth noting. If we start to break below this channel, it's an indication, perhaps, of uh, that the short-term top is uh, is confirmed. You want to see an impulse through this channel and then a corrective rally that fails to make a new high, it is possible that we could bounce around in here and actually form a wedge uh, before finally peaking. Now, this is a chart I've shared with my, uh, my customers and clients over the last few days, and it's a long-term S&P. Uh, we've talked about this uh, in past videos, and uh, as I've noted before, if we blast through this area that uh, we're testing right now. The next stop in the S&P is around 1350 to 1370. That's about 78% of this entire decline, and it's 62% of the uh, the first leg up off of the uh, March 09 lows. Now, if we get through there, uh, it is interesting that there really isn't another calculation. Uh, the the next logical stopping point uh, for this rally would be the all-time highs the uh, uh, 2007 highs on the S&P, and that would also be an A equals C uh, based on this count, uh, right around that 1570 uh, area basis, the S&P. So uh, worth noting, I don't necessarily favor that this is going to occur, and indeed I, I've doubted it all along, b largely because of the U.S. debt uh, situation and uh, the real estate market and so on and so forth. I, I, I perhaps have wrongly uh, assumed that, uh, you know, the poor economic conditions were going to uh, lead to a uh, decline sooner rather than later in the stock market. Now, obviously, up to now, it, it simply hasn't happened. Now, here's uh, pulling back a little further. One of the problems that I have with the, the scenario of this being a B wave is that it's relatively short in respect to time compared to the uh, nine-year decline for uh, wave A here. Uh, that said, uh, it's, there's no rule that it has to be as long as, as wave A. So uh, the scenario, if, if indeed we go all the way up to uh, 1570, and that's a B wave and it peaks there, basically that uh, indicates the, the probability, or certainly the possibility, that we're going to have a very sharp and very severe C wave down into uh, 2012 that would uh, target at least the bottom of A. In other words, uh, down around 650 to 600 on the S&P and probably uh, in, in a pretty quick fashion. Again, this is all uh, you know, a big if 
if we get up to 1570 and if that rally is indeed a B wave. I think that perhaps a better way to count it, uh, assuming that we even get up there, is that uh, the decline again to 2009 is wave A and that the rally we're in now is just A of the corrective B wave up. Uh, that still basically uh, allows for uh, the market to go as high as 1570 or so. You still have your A equals C scenario uh, and B ultimately would take us down uh, potentially to uh, that 650 area uh, just as a C wave would. However, it would likely be a much more choppy decline and the thing that I, I like about this scenario compared to the uh, the previous one is that it allows the, for B to take a lot more time and to be uh, more in sync with uh, this uh, big black A, so to speak, um, uh, in terms of time. Okay, so at any rate, let's get back to uh, back to the future, so to speak, and and, and present day markets. Um, the uh, this is the bond chart. Uh, th I believe that we've just completed a uh, triangle fourth wave and that we're in a fifth wave down in the bonds. Uh, I suspect we're going down to around 115. Uh, it's possible we'll bottom uh, higher than that. But uh, at that point, I think we're going to get a fairly substantial bounce in the bonds. And indeed, uh, the bounce in the bonds may coincide with, uh, with a decline in stocks. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see how these uh, pieces fit together. Here is a, a more detailed view of the bonds. Again, here's that triangle. What I'm counting down from there is a 1, 2, 1, 2 and that uh, we still are working on uh, a couple of uh, three fours before uh, uh, this decline is done. Uh, the Euro, uh, I believe it's topped. We have uh, what I think best counts as five waves down. Uh, from there, uh, we have a, a potential um, irregular ABC or expanded flat and it's targeted the previous fourth wave peak which comes in around the uh, 136.80 area. Indeed the high today 136.83 pretty much uh, on the nose of a, a perfect uh, Elliott uh, pattern. Uh, we need to see uh, uh, you know impulsive waves down from here to confirm that indeed uh, uh, that scenario is taking place but um, you know up to this point uh, looking pretty good uh, and also I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that we had you know multiple similar patterns this kind of wedge pattern that we uh, ultimately broke uh, out of to the downside uh, on various degrees of sc scale these are uh, patterns that I like to, to trade whether they're uh, in an Elliott context or not and speaking of that here's uh, crude oil this is a uh, an update of a chart that I actually posted uh, in the last couple of days suggesting that we might have a short sell in uh, crude oil around the 88, uh, 67 and a half area. Uh, the market indeed broke through there. Uh, the way that I like to trade these is I trade them on the breakout on a stop and then once uh, we get into the black I like to bring my, I like to trail a stop down. Uh, I suggest to, to my clients to bring your stop down to around 87.75. So uh, if they were following uh, 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 my advice, they would be out uh, with a profit or at least have their stop uh, uh, at better than break even at this point and be holding short. Anyway, that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a good week and good luck in the week ahead. Thanks again.